Hi and welcome to this video where I've decided to remove the suspension strut on this Mini R50. The reason being is I believe there's bearings at the top and they would have obviously sort of dried up over time and I'd like to just see if it's possible to actually re-grease those bearings. So in this video I'll remove the strut, I'll also disassemble the complete strut, show it all laid out and also attempt to grease the bearings. So that's basically what's in this video and I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. So the first job to do is raise the mini, support on axle stands and remove the road wheel. So I find with the mini it's a little bit easier just to put it onto some low rise ramps just to get it off the ground slightly like so and that way I can get my trolley jack underneath the front a lot easier. So we'll just open the bonnet pop that there and then we've got that little yellow tab on the passenger side lifted up and there it is now I've taken the inner wheel arch liner out so that you can actually see more in here now don't forget to break your wheels loose before you actually jack the car up I've actually added this bit of footage because I forgot so now my trolley jack can just about go underneath there onto the subframe not sure if you should actually jack up on the subframe but I have and it seems to be okay so far so we'll pop our axle stands underneath now somebody did ask me what size these are they are actually 12 ton um, probably somewhat overkill for a mini um, but safety first eh? Right then, so we can just lower that down now. And I've now got to try and undo the wheel nuts um, in real life. So I used an air impact gun, which did get me out of trouble. The only problem is the locking nuts. You really don't want to use an air impact on that in case you shatter it. So I had to use a little bit of imagination here with a breaker bar. And just try and swing the wheel enough to get some momentum on it to break it loose which actually does work so, anyway, so that's the wheel off so we can then have a good look at the suspension strut now and see what we've got to do so we need to now remove the brake caliper the drop link bar the ABS cable and possibly the track rod ends and remember to support the caliper on a strap so I include a couple of photos here so here we can see the suspension spring and the strut itself and then from a different angle note the end of the spring and where it is in relation to the strut this photo shows the drop link the strut to hub pinch bolt and the steering track rod end and finally in this photo we can see the hub carrier the ABS cable and the brake caliper. So what I'll do now is just turn the steering wheel to give me better access to the back of the caliper like so and I'm going to give everything a good spray with some plus gas so hopefully when I come to start moving some of this it should be a little bit easier. So I'll liberally coat around the bottom of the strut Like so, so we just pop our caliper spring off. Sometimes they can actually get stuck in. Thankfully that came out nicely. And then just pop the two rubber covers or plastic covers off the slide pins. So then using a 7mm hex key we can just undo these slide pins. Now I used to put copper grease on these. I've since changed now to silicon grease because apparently copper grease um, can cause some issues that I wasn't aware of. And then I did recall that when you buy new brake pads and calipers and stuff like that, you always tend to get silicon grease in a little sachet. So it does seem to be the preferred grease. 
But anyway, so we'll just pop this caliper off now. Like so. Everything is quite rusty on this car. I was saying that the brake pads and the discs look pretty new. So just pop those out. Now what you don't want to do is leave the caliper hanging. You do want to support that on a strap. So I'll just straighten the steering there. And we'll just tie that up now. We also need to pop the pipe out of the bracket because that bracket is on the strut and also just gently prise off the ABS wire that's popped in on a couple of places again I'm just going to give it another little spray there with some plus gas as you can see I did get some on the brake disc there so I'm now just going to give myself access to the back so I can get to the track rod end here, give that a little spray. The bottom of the drop link and the top of the drop link is an absolute nightmare to get hold of. But anyway, so for the track rod end it's a 15mm spanner and a 5mm hex key. So we'll just see if we can break that loose with a breaker bar. Now hopefully it should come out most of the way without actually needing to use the hex key. Tend to need them for when you install it. So I'm just going to bring that up flush and give that a little tap there. And it should just drop down like so. Okay, so that's the track rod end. I'm doing this just to give me a bit more space and when I start pushing things down I don't really want to be messing around with the steering components possibly damaging them right then so let's get this track rod end off now this is a 17 millimeter spanner and a 5 millimeter hex key so they do sort of rust up in there so sometimes you do need to try and clear it out a bit And again, this one seems to be coming out okay. That came out nice and easy. Didn't need to use the hex key. Right then, so we should be onto that pinch bolt at the back there. Which is probably going to be quite awkward because it's been in there a long time. So that's an 18mm socket and most definitely need a breaker bar as you can see. That's been in there quite a while, probably 20 years. There we go, it started to move. I'll just move that backwards and forwards in a moment, just to loosen it a little bit. Like I say, just give that a slight wiggle backwards and forwards just to break any of the rust up. So hopefully it doesn't start binding when I undo it. Keeping it soaked with plenty of plus gas there. There we go, she's coming out now. Yes, plenty of rust there on the thread. Right, so that's the pinch bolt out. So we should better just push this knuckle part down, or the hub. Like so, you've got to be careful here, don't puncture the strut, because there is oil in that. Then we should be just carefully wiggle. Now you don't want to be too rough, because you've obviously got the drive shaft going to the hub. And you've got the CV joints. And you obviously don't want to start pulling those around and causing damage. So again, once this is off, it's worth strapping that up just to take any strain off the CV joints. Right then. So we're basically on to just the three nuts on the top inside the engine bay. And for that it's a 13 millimeter socket. 
Now technically these, a lot of these bolts and nuts should actually be replaced when you come to refit. For example these three nuts are supposed to be new ones. So once these come out the strut will just drop out now like that. But it's not too difficult to remove. I was quite surprised that this one actually said Cooper S on the struts. So perhaps it was an upgrade. So with the strut off, we can now take to the bench for disassembly. Now just before I do that, it might be worth just showing the components that make up the strut. So you've got some sort of idea of the order in which they all come off. So what I'll do now is I'll get my spring compressor out. So this is quite an old one, it's a rather meaty Sealy RE227, had it for many years. I think it's actually rated at a staggering two and a half tonnes, so it should be up for the job. But either way you still wear eye protection and ideally face protection when compressing these springs. Because there's certainly a lot of tension bound up in them. So what I'll do first is to remove that drop link and as you can see once that, when that is on the car it's an absolute nightmare to get to. You really have no access. Um, and in hindsight I should have put it back on before putting it back under the car. But anyway so it's 17mm spanner on both ends here. So on the bench it's lovely and easy to remove, no problem at all. We'll pop that to one side. Okay, so let's have a quick look at this strut. So it actually says Cooper S there on the label. So like I say, perhaps this was a bit of an upgrade. Quite rusty. And it does seem to be quite stiff at the top to turn. So I would just like to have a look at those bearings. So we start compressing that spring then. I'm just putting this extra, um, extra compressor on there for sort of safety and also just to even the spring up because I can sort of just tighten it down and make things a little bit straighter for undoing that top nut. Otherwise the spring is sort of going at a bit of an angle there. So that's nice and loose now. So note the metal tag there and also there is a paint mark on the spring because they've obviously all got different tensions depending on what equipment was fitted into the car. So we can just pop off this dust cap, like so. And now what we need is an 18mm pass-through socket with a 6mm hex key. So we pop it on like that. Put the hex key in the middle and we should be able to just undo it. Um, should be able to, keep going. Uh, Okay, not strong enough for this. Okay, I think we'll go for a breaker bar. And I'm still not strong enough. I'm actually concerned I might break the hex bit. I think I might actually have to cheat. So again, I'm going to just give it a little spray there with some plus gas. In the hope that will help a little bit. And... I'm reaching for the impact wrench. So hopefully this will just jar it loose, which it has. So I can go back to now using the correct tool. Okay then, so we can pop off this nut, which must be replaced with a new one. We've then got the conical washer. And take this top plate off. And that's actually got the bearing on the other side. It's all quite rusty, all of this. 
I mean, it's rotating, but it does seem a little bit sticky. So I'd like to just see if I can grease that. And then we've got the spring seat. Like so. Then we've got another conical washer and the rubber bump stop inside. Mine's actually sort of split apart. So that's part of it. There's a little bit more in there. And then we can pull out the damping strut. So you do need to check the piston is hard to push in. If it just goes up and down really easily. It's not going to do any work. It's not going to cushion the spring. And then we can take that gator out. There's the rest of my bump stop there. Pop that back on the piston. It's almost like a surprise party bag in there. Seeing if there's anything else. And then out comes the rubber gator. There's no splits in that, just checking. And then finally, we can release the tension on the spring. So again, that spring's quite rusty. I mean, they can just snap on you, especially when they're rusty like that. So you do need to take precautions. Now I'm going to have a go at seeing if I can clean some of this up with a needle scaler which will shake things up nicely. As you can see, the sort of rust parts are breaking away, which is somewhat quite useful. And then there's another metal ring there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe some grease over all of this. So it's mostly surface rust on the top. Now one thing I did do, which was silly, was I actually ran that tool over the bearing, um, which was rather silly of me. So because that bearing had quite a bit of rust on it, it wasn't such a bright idea to run that tool over this, as you'll see. So the bearing actually separates again. Yeah, so mine seems to be cracked after I ran that scaler over it, which is a bit of a shame. So what I might try and do is inject a bit of grease into that um, and see how that plays out. But anyway, so here's all the parts laid out now. So it gives you an idea of what the suspension strut is made up of. And that's a McPherson strut, which is probably fitted to most cars. So there are quite a few parts to it. Quite a few rusty parts on my one. There we are, so that's what it's made up of. So now to reassemble the strut again. So now to reassemble, to try and remember the orientation that the spring came out, just to make it a bit easier for putting the strut back inside. So we just pop our rubber boot on there. And then we we'll pop our dust boot back through the top of the spring. Again, I'm making sure it lines up with how it was originally. There's a slight tear in the top of it where the end of the spring was, so I'm making sure that still lines up. 
And I did put some yellow markings on there. Just to make sure that that spring is definitely seating where it originally was. Okay, so then it's back with the the bump stop. Pop that back onto the piston. Like so, and then the conical washer goes on top of that. So then we need to put the bearing assembly back in. Like so. It's actually spinning okay since I've greased it. Um, not sure it would last very long now, but it is at least moving. And then the top plate. Make sure that metal bracket's in the correct position as well. Just sits on there like that. So I've given everything a bit of a wipe over with some grease, so hopefully it won't rust any more. But well, it won't rust as much. And then we put our conical washer on the top and the final nut. And then just retighten those with our 18mm pass through socket and 6mm hex and that's to 64 newton meters. Now I haven't actually talked it because I haven't actually got a crow's foot socket. I've ordered one but it hasn't arrived just yet. So I will have to finish talking that when it's actually on the car. But normally you would talk it first before putting it onto the car. Just having a quick check over that everything looks okay. No obvious mistakes. Okay then. So now to refit the strut back onto the car. Okay then, so we can just bring the strut up to the to the holes under the wing. Now like I said, those three nuts should technically be replaced with new ones. So I'll just pop those back on there. And they're tightened with a 13mm socket and that will be to 34 newton meters. And what I'll do first is just to get the hub back onto the strut. So make sure it's all nice and clean. It's probably worth just going through that with a wire brush. Just to make sure any dirt or grit has been removed. So you can see the slot at the back there, because we've, we've got to line up the strut. There's a metal plate at the back that needs to slide down there in between those. So I'm just popping a little bit of grease in there. And then it's a case of just pushing down like so on the control arm. And then hopefully lining it up and it should go on. Now I found a bottle jack just helped to push it up there and then I just gradually tapped it around to make sure it all lined up. That slot at the back. And then just use the jack to finally push it all the way up like so. That's gone on quite nicely. And then we need to pop that pinch bolt back in. So I'm just going to give this pinch bolt a bit of a clean up, get some of that rust off and pop a bit of oil on. And then using our 18mm socket we need to tighten this to 81 newton meters. That's nice and tight. Let's get our torque wrench now. Set that to 81. And there's our click. Right then, so that's back on. So I now need to tighten the top ones. Now they're tightened to 34 newton meters with a 13mm socket. 
And like I said, these technically should be new nuts. And then we can go back down under the wheel arch and we fit our track rod ends. So that was a 15 millimeter spanner and a five millimeter hex. So you'll probably need the hex key for this because the ball joint's obviously just going to keep slipping now. Pop that in there. And then again, we need to torque this to 52 newton meters. And again, that should be a new nut. So now on to the drop link. And what a game this is. My goodness. I have cut most of this out because it was just such a game. Um, two 17mm spanners and a lot of fiddling. You can only move it a fraction each time with the spanners. So um, pretty bad design there. But anyway, once you've done it, we use the magic of cameras to, to get that in there nice and easily. There we go. Saves you seeing the frustration. Now you should talk that as well to 56 newton meters. Obviously, I'm not going to be talking it. It's hand tight. Thankfully the lower ball joint is a lot easier. So we'll pop that on there. Again, this is 56 newton meters. But it is accessible. So I'm just going to raise the suspension up there so I can get my hex key in. Like so. And then what I'll probably do is use a crow's foot on the torque wrench because it's a little bit tight there. So that's 56 newton meters. So when using a crow's foot, you've always got to use it at 90 degrees to the head. Because if you put it on lengthways, you'll actually increase the length of the torque wrench. So you'll actually be tightening it more before you get that click. So it's just worth noting that. And finally we can get the caliper back on. So I'll move that back over. Make sure your pipe isn't twisted at all. And don't forget your ABS cable as well needs to be clipped back in onto the strut and onto the subframe and then the body. So normally I'd pop a little bit of grease on the brake pads and stuff but like I say since this car is not actually on the road and we're focusing on the suspension not the braking I'll just pop it in. I will actually though put a little bit of silicon grease on the guide pins just so those don't actually get stuck. Like I said, I used to use copper grease, but apparently you shouldn't really use that. Um, it can actually apparently cause it to bind even more. So I've never had a problem, but I do believe silicon is the way to go. And then these are tied into the seven millimeter hex key between 25 and 30 Newton meters. So we'll set our torque wrench to 25 in the middle. So just snug those up. Might get your 7mm hex key stuck at the same time. And then just pop the plastic dust covers back on. 
and then we just need to go and get that little spring and pop that back in it wouldn't actually hurt to put a little bit of copper grease in those holes that's what I would normally do like I said they can rust in there and then you have to try and drill it out again right. so we now just push the brake pedal um, so the caliper piston just makes contact again with the brake rotor there we go it's back out make sure you clean the rotors especially when working on it because there's bound to be some grease get onto it and we can finally get our wheel back on and that's a 17 millimeter socket and that will need to be torqued to 110 newton meters there we are so we'll have to torque those when it's on the ground So my 21mm crow's foot has just arrived, so I can properly torque the new top nut to 64 newton meters. So I'll be using the laser 7673 set again with the added 21mm crow's foot. So I'm not sure about the name on the crow's foot. Um, I think that is actually a proper brand. There we go. My son found that very entertaining. But anyway, so we need the 6mm again, the 18mm pass through sockets, set our torque wrench to 64 newton meters. So we're just manually tighten this up by hand, like so. And now, with the crow's foot, because these laser sockets actually need a 21mm socket on the outside. So now that fits on there nicely at 90 degrees, we should better torque it. There we go. They probably ought to actually supply one of those in the set because it is sort of somewhat essential for talking that up. That hex key always seems to, to stay in there. And then just pop your protective cap back on and job's done. So just as an end note, when taking a strut apart, you have to be very wary in case the spring snapped under tension, which could cause significant personal injury to your face or eyes. Never skip PPE when working on them. Check the damper for oil leakage, indicating the seals have failed and pitting to the piston rod. Also check the damper works correctly. It should have resistance to being pushed down. If it is easily pushed down, it may have failed and won't properly dampen the spring's rapid movements on the road. So finally, some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. We start here showing the strut in position on the car. So you can see there the caliper. So this is how it would look. Obviously the line has been removed so that you can see all this. That was the ABS cable. There's our track rod ends. There's all the parts of the suspension. And there we are, we're looking at the strut there. And the bump stop. And there's the top mount and the spring. There we can see our bearings, which unfortunately I think I damaged. There's the strut again. Thankfully the piston looks okay. So there we are with the strut off the car. And there's the hub. So it gives you an idea how things look. And there's us finally talking the top nut using an odd named cruise foot. So you've been watching removing and refitting a front shock absorber on a mini and thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you service and maintain your car within your budget. This video was filmed and edited by me Mark Savage in January 2022 and I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.